In his 1844 work, De Tectonic de Helenen, architectural scholar and archaeologist Karl Bodicher wrote the following words. We conceive of tectonics in the more narrow sense, the activity of building or of making objects of use. As soon as this activity is ethically suffused and can rise to the charges placed upon it by intellectual or physical life. At that point, this activity not only seeks to satisfy mere needs by forming a volume in accordance with material necessity, but instead may elevate that volume to a Kuntz form. This manifesto on architecture provides key insights into the origins of tectonic thought. Bodicher, along with Gottfried Semper, is widely regarded as a founding father of the theory of architectural tectonics. His ideas about architecture originate in the study of Hellenic building and the principles with which the Greeks designed their greatest works. Bodicher claimed that this era of architecture was unmatched in its ability to convey the underlying essence of an architectural work through the expressiveness of the ornamentation with which it was clad. As an example, take the Greek column. The structural function of the column is relatively simple. A beam above transfers gravity load generated by the overhead structure to the top of the column, which in turn transfers the load through its mass to the base and to the ground or structure below. When the ornamentation of a Greek order is applied, the two points of primary transfer are also the points adorned with the most intricate elements of the design, highlighting or revealing the work underway below the surface. Bodicher refers to the actual work being done below the surface of this object of use as the kern form, which can be translated as the core form, or the underlying ontological truth of the object. The ornamentation is the kunst form, or the art form, that both covers and reveals the kern form below. This concept is one of the most essential and formative ideas of architectural tectonics, the notion that there is a distinct relationship between how a building works and how its visible components reveal the truth to those occupying its spaces. About 150 years later, around the turn of the 21st century, a resurgence led by architectural theorist Kenneth Frampton brought the ideals of architectural tectonics back into the spotlight. In his essay, Towards a Critical Regionalism, Frampton writes, the primary principle of architectural autonomy resides in the tectonic rather than the scenographic. That is to say, this autonomy is embedded in the revealed ligaments of which the construction and in the way in which the syntactical form of the structure explicitly resists the action of gravity. Although there are some similarities to the definition offered by Bodicher in the mid-1800s, there are also some distinct differences. Bodicher was seeking to reveal the underlying forces at work through the ornamentation of the building. He was seeking representational and referential understanding of the useful purpose of building. Frampton, amongst others, however, shifted that definition. It remains essential that the tectonic building must demonstrate how gravity is moving through the structure and that we must be able to perceive this reality. The art form, however, is rarely mentioned in later definitions. Instead, there is a clear call for an understanding of the joining of material, the ligaments that tie the building together and help to achieve the stability that is sought. What this very brief snippet of the history of tectonics illuminates is that the theory has over the past century and a half necessarily evolved. It is transformed and shifted to adapt to changing technologies and cultural attitudes, architectural styles and environmental needs. Despite its adaptations, however, and likely because of them, it is relevant to the contemporary architect and the contemporary architecture student. Architectural tectonics remains a central tenet to both the study of architecture and the practice of its design and construction. The lessons that have arisen from this lineage of architectural thought have the potential to positively influence our built environment for the foreseeable future. The evolutionary process of architectural tectonics has led, naturally, to the interweaving of a series of complementary lines of thought that have organically sprouted and grown over time. In order to best convey the full breadth and depth of the theory of tectonics, each of these ideas must be explored. To simplify the experience, like ideas can be classified into a taxonomical structure. This strategy also has the potential to make this involved theory easier to understand for those more novice to architectural theory in general, like architecture students. This framework includes anatomy, the study of the primary components and systems of a building, construction, the study of the means and methods of construction, as well as the materiality of the built environment, Detail, the study of the joints and other critical conditions that make up the smallest scale of a work of architecture. Place, the study of the impact of a specific place or context on the tectonic makeup of a building. Representation, the study of the relationship between the actual construction of the building that was required for stability and the cladding or ornamentation that is used to create the aesthetic scheme. Space, the study of the relationship between the creation of space and the construction and representational qualities of a building and the atectonic, the study of conditions that run contrary to typical tectonic thought. This tectonic framework has the potential to be of great value to our students of architecture. Architectural tectonics is a study in dualities. As such, it has the ability to help novice practitioners begin to understand and develop connections between design and construction, between systems that are assembled and those that are massed, between the architectural detail and the building of which it is a part, and between the visible surface of a structure and the substance lying beneath.